the first assets we ought to seize here in the United States is the personal assets of the heads of the Communist Party in the United States. Tens of billions of dollars of real estate assets, stocks and bonds. You know what I'd like to do? Seize those assets first and distribute them to the dead. Xi's personal family ownership in New York City and Wan Xi Shan's ownership in New York City, we liquidate that and we give it to the families of the dead. What, by the way, Wan Xi Shan and Xi, you guys, are, you guys are communists. Why do you have so much personal wealth? Chinese Communist Party is going to fall. You know what's going to fall? And here's why they're scared to the, to the marrow of their being. They understand when the deplorables around the world, in England, and in Europe, and in India, and in Brazil, and in good old United States of America, in Japan, when they wake up to the fact that, hey, this was Xi's fault. This is Xi's responsible. The, the CCP should understand there's a lot of folks in China that are not happy with what you did. They're not happy with the dead. And the people in Wuhan are not happy with the dead in Wuhan. The biggest victims of the Chinese Communist Party are the Chinese people. And that's why they're so crazy at the CCTV and all these things. They're trying to say, hey, Bannon's going after the Chinese. Mm -mm, wrong. And all you running dogs in the Western media, I always say the CCP. It's the CCP's enemy, not the Chinese people and not China. It's the Chinese Communist Party. Just another group of gangsters, although quite brilliant gangsters. The infiltration, the fellow travelers, the running dogs, the appeasers, it's all going to come out. It's all going to come out over time. All going to come out over time. And they can hit back as hard as they want. We're not stopping. We haven't even started. The American people, in their righteous indignation, ask Kaiser Wilhelm how that turned out for him. Ask Adolf Hitler how that turned out for him. Ask Tojo how that turned out for him. Ask Mussolini how that turned out for him. When the American people in the West turn, their righteous indignation on something when it's in the gun sites, it's going to be over, and it's going to be over for you guys. 近期，中共国防大学教授以强硬反美言论闻名，被称为中共军方鹰派代表人物的戴旭发表了一篇题为《对美国四个想不到和十点认识》的文章。四个想不到分别是：第一个想不到，美国对中国有这么大仇恨；第二个想不到。美国政府下手这么狠，时间如此紧迫，容不下谈判的时间，这是绝大多数中国中共官员和专家预测不到的。第三个想不到，没有一个国家站出来表示同情和支持中国。第四个想不到，美国国内竟然形成了统一战线。十点认识的主要内容则是：美国不是纸老虎，是真老虎；美国是民选政府，其国家行动是民意的选择。美国有完善的纠偏纠错机制，不会永远在政治正确下犯错，要低调，不要暴露超越美国的野心，要闷声发大财。美国有很多盟友，也很牢固，要承认美国是世界老大这个事实。美国掌握着高科技，我们仅仅是在消化吸收美国的技术，万万不要把消化吸收吹捧成什么创新，不要成为美国的敌人，不要指望美国的选举会改变其国家战略。美国的核心战略是不会改变。不要天真的认为你仅仅是在与美国一家争斗。美国有庞大战略同盟，它代表了一种普世价值观。只要美帝一行动，世界上的其他力量和国家最终都会与美国步调一致。时事评论员夏小强分析认为，盖旭这篇文章在他反美语言和角度的背后，大部分都道出了中美关系的真相和实质。从盖旭一反常态。论调大变，可以看出，与美国有着共同普世价值观的国家和政府正在形成的统一战线，令中共感受到了巨大的生存危机。夏小强指出，中共军中战狼从以往狂野的长啸，变为如今认怂的哀嚎，预示着中共政权的灭亡正在一步步来临。